Good morning, good morning. Go ahead and worship with us. Come on.
I choose this day to be grateful, Lord. I give you praise with an open heart. I'm waking up to heaven. I'm waking up to you. I choose this day. I choose this day to be grateful, Lord. I give you praise with an open heart. I'm waking up to heaven. I'm waking up to you for always being good. For always being good, thank you for your mercies that are new, thank you in spirit and in truth, thank you, I'm telling you, thank you. Sing it again, for always being good. And for always being good, thank you for your mercies that are new. Thank you in spirit and in truth. Thank you, I'm telling you.
In light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. You're the key.
I'm lost without you I'm lost without you I'm lost without you I'm so lost without you I'm desperate for you One more time, sing it out And I Desperate for you. And I, I, I'm lost without you. So then faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. It's the rhema Word of God, that activating peace that He just deposits right here in your spirit that you know this is what God said to me. I believe for some of you, we're going to hang on here for just a minute, Eli. I, I feel like for some of you, right now in this moment, if God has not given you a word for 2023, for some of you, he's going to de- begin to deposit that right now. And faith comes by hearing, and when you know God says something and he deposits it there, that is what you then walk out in your life. That's what we've been talking about out of Habakkuk chapter 2 that says, write the vision and make it plain so that you can run with it. What's that word that God is giving you for 2023? That he really does want to speak to you to give you this this tangible thing within you. Not out of your flesh that you desire. We can all come up with a word that we desire of what I want to happen in my life. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is what is that word, that deposit that God wants to put in you that's from him because he knows what this year holds. He knows what's yet to come that maybe we don't see or know. That's what the Spirit of God wants to, dis- wants to place right here within you. It's something new and fresh. It's probably not something that's been on your mind. It's probably not that thing that you desire that you think would fix certain situations of your life. Because if that was true, you would already be walking it out. He wants to give you something that maybe you have not seen yet, that he wants you to run with this year. What is that thing that he wants you to run with? Why don't you just maybe bow your head, just close your eyes, and I want you just to ask Holy Spirit. Faith comes by hearing. The Lord says that Jesus says that my sheep know my voice. That means as believers, as being sheep, being in the fold, you can hear his voice. You can hear him. And he speaks to you in specific ways that you know that you know that you know that God spoke to you. It's in that same voice that many of you surrendered your life to Jesus. Where a moment in your life where you were like, today I'm going to surrender my life to Jesus, it's because the Holy Spirit revealed Jesus to you. And in the same way, I just believe in this next moment, the Holy Spirit's going to put a deposit in you, for you, for you, something new and fresh. Just take a moment. You don't have to sing with these guys. Eli's going to sing. You just let the Lord speak to you. Just ask him, Holy Spirit, speak, for your servant is listening. Holy Spirit, I desire to hear your word for my life for 2023. And I, I, I'm 
desperate for you. Come on, I believe he's going to start speaking to you. And I he's going to give you a word. He's going to say something that might seem a little unfamiliar. I'm lost without you. You might have to look up what it is. You might have to wrestle with it. And I, I, I'm desperate for you. Father, would you speak? Holy Spirit, reveal your purpose, your plan. And I, reveal it to our hearts today. I, I, I'm lost without you. I'm lost without you, Jesus. I'm lost without you. And I'm lost without you, Jesus. I'm lost without you. Lost without you. And I, I, I'm desperate for you. For your word, God. And I, without you now listen for some of you God's been speaking I was standing here as we were worshiping a few minutes ago and just felt like the Holy Spirit said grab your Bible and I grabbed my Bible and it started just just flipping through things and he led me to Romans 10 17 that says about hearing and we hear from the Word of God and at that very same moment in this song in one of the verses of this song it said the word spoken to you and I knew the Lord was saying I want to speak my word to you today I want to speak my word to you and for some of us we have to let go of this idea that we can't hear God or that it's for somebody else and there's, there's a place in our heart that we have to open up to hear him, that he wants to speak to us. And I, I would not be pushing along this line if I didn't believe that God really wanted to speak to you today. You know why? Because he loves you. And when he speaks a word with you, a lot of times it doesn't make a lot of sense and you have to like wrestle with it. For some of you, if, if, if he's begun to speak a word to you today, he's given you a word or a phrase or something, you should write that down. That's what it says we should write down and run with what he speaks. Standing up here two weeks ago, we were in a moment like this, and I was asking the Lord for a word for the year, and, and I have one for the church, but for my own life. He gave me this word, and here's what it was, intentional. Now, why would he speak a word intentional to me? I've been asking him, okay, Lord, so when he gives you a word, what do you do with that? Oh God, okay God, thanks for giving me this word intentional. I'm not sure what it means. And then many times we're just like, oh, I heard God, great. And then we just let it go. Wow, God spoke to me. What a wonderful thing, God spoke to me. No, God spoke to me the word intentional. Now I need to seek him to find out, God, what do you want me to do with this word? In other words, my first question was, where have I not been intentional? <laughs> and he began to show me some places but I have not been intentional. Then there's a partnering with the word, like he revealed to me two or three places I have not been intentional. One of those is in my health, like my physical activity. I haven't been intentional. And so when I hear the word, okay God, that's great, you want me to be intentional and you want me to be intentional about my health, but I'm not gonna partner with that word, I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing. That, that is resisting the word of the Lord. 
If he speaks to me a word about being intentional about my health and I do nothing about it all year, then that means that word didn't mean a thing to me. I just took it and I let it go. In other words, it was planted in the soil of my heart, but I was too hard to receive it or there was too many thorns or, or let the birds of the air come and pluck it away. Or I can say, God, till up my ground, show me where I need to be intentional, and then I'm going to partner with the word and begin to become, what is God saying? Intentional. Mitch, become intentional. And that's one of the list of things he's been talking to me about being intentional about. Why? Because at the end of 2023, if I partner with his word, something in me is going to change, and I will look different December 31st, 2023, than I did January 1st, 2023. That is why God wants to speak to you. He wants to speak to you. So you might have got a word in these last few minutes, or you might have just been thinking about what you're going to have for lunch. I don't know. But there's a way to open up your spirit to say, God, what are you speaking to me? And, it, and if you don't have it right now, that's okay. We've been asking God this month that he would speak to us. So he's going to keep speaking. He's going, if you'll open yourself up, he'll speak to you. And it, this word will probably begin to keep coming back to you. And then I want to encourage you to write it down, make it bold, put it in front of you, so that as he gives you direction, you can partner with him. Many of us treat God like he's the money tree out back that it's just going to just manifest. But that's not what he does. He partners with us. Father, I thank you that you are the God who speaks. You are the God who knows each of us so individually you know every little aspect about our life. And Lord, you love us. Even though we live in a broken world and one that's a mess, you love us. And even though we've made many mistakes, you still love us. It amazes me, God, that as many times as I've screwed up, you still love me. But you do. And I receive that love today, God. And Lord, I want to receive your spoken word to my life so that I can have faith because faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by your word so God will you speak your word to our spirits that we would be able to run with that word this year and we'd be able to put it into action in Jesus name we pray and everybody said amen come on give God praise this morning we love you Lord we praise you God we worship you in this place today. We honor you, God, King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. Say hello to someone before you find a seat today. You're indescribable in every way. You search me out and I'm caught up in your grace. The current changed You showed me life A new horizon A silver lining A brand new day And I'm like, ooh I can't find the words to say And ooh You're higher than I'm always in love with you Who opened my eyes to see And put out your heart for me My God, my God
everybody. Today is step four. And if you have completed steps one through three, then you are invited to complete your growth track journey by attending step four. Step four is all about making an impact and making a difference in our world is what we're about at Grace. In just a few short minutes, we'll dismiss anyone who's completed the first three steps and wants to take step four. Good morning, Grace. Hey, give it up for Pastor Andy there. Always putting things back in place. Hey, we'll continue worshiping this morning as you find your way back to your seat. Hey, as you do that, would love it if everybody would direct your attention towards the connection card. Go ahead and grab that in that seat pocket in front of you, or if you're in the front row, there should be a basket down below that you can grab one of those. Or for those of you who are really hip, uh, we've got a digital option available as well. You can scan that QR code there on the back or use the Grace app. There's a way that you can do that digitally as well. And of course, Grace members, if any information has changed, phone numbers, addresses, things like that, let us know. But listen, if you're a guest with us today, we want to say welcome. If this is your first time with us, we would love it if you would take time, fill this card out, and here's the deal, here's the grace guarantee. We don't share your information, nothing like that, okay? Uh, no one's showing up at your door, nothing like that's gonna happen, but what will happen is if you drop this in these grace boxes there in the back at the conclusion of the service, uh, you'll, get, you'll get a letter in the mail from our senior pastor, uh, Pastor Mitch, uh, just thanking you for being with us and a small gift as a token of our appreciation, and that, that is it, all right? And of course, Grace members, you can uh, go ahead and prepare your tithes and offerings at this point. And if you need an offering envelope, there are the same places that you found the connection card, or you can give online as well. And once again, you can drop the offerings off in those boxes. Before we go to the uh, announcement video, a couple of things that I want to highlight. You'll see this here in a second. Uh, Big Igloo Adventures is providing this afternoon an afternoon of, uh, of fun axe throwing over in uh, Gibbon. And so, uh, what? yeah, thank you, thank you. All right. Um, but here's the deal. You're going you're gonna to get some details on this, but I just want to let you know there are, still some, uh, there are still spots available. So once again, you can use that QR code there in front of you. You can sign up. Uh, you can register if you'd like to, or hey, if you want, they can help you at the kiosk as well. But just want to let you know there are still some times, and this is the uh, axe throwing place over in, in Gibbon. And so uh, if you'd like to do that this afternoon, you've got some time, take the family over. Great family activity. Um, the other thing is, how many of you have been following along with the Chosen series? All right, a handful of you, okay. Well, here's the deal, is uh, season three, the season finale, is actually going to be released in theaters, okay? And so February, I want to make sure I got the right date, February 2nd, um, we've bought... Uh, some tickets for the 7 p.m. showing. We've actually rented the theater out, all right, for the 7 p.m. showing. That's a Thursday night. Okay, so if you want to get caught up, I'd encourage you, if you've not seen any episodes, just take it as a personal challenge. Binge all of the episodes until, and then come watch the season for three. I believe in you. I think you can do it, okay? All right, this is, this is worth binging on, all right? Um, but if you'd like to, we've got those tickets. We do, uh, we have a limited number, but the 7 o'clock showing, uh, that Thursday, February 2nd, um, we do have some tickets. They're $10 a piece. So if you, hey, you'd like to come watch the Chosen Season 3 finale with your Grace brethren and sisterin, all right, you can come and join us at uh, the, the Hilltop Theater, all right? Hey, before we continue on, and yes, Grounded Kids, I see you. We're going to dismiss here in just a second. Before we do, I just, I really felt like, um, you know, coming off the conference, um, which I know that God did just some amazing, amazing things in, in many of our lives, and especially for us as a church. But I want to just tell you, um, I had a conversation with somebody at the Oasis Pastors Gathering. And, and, and for me, this was probably the biggest takeaway for me personally. And uh, if any of you know Pastor Jamie, uh, who's from the Beaver City area, um, and you'd know him if you met him. He's, he's a very outspoken guy. He's a wonderful brother. Uh, Pastor Jamie and I were just out here in the front just having a conversation before the Oasis meeting started. And he just reminded me of the Levitical priests. He said, you know, you realize, he says, it was God who started the fire upon the altar. He said, but it was up to the priests to keep that fire going. And he just looked at me and I just, I mean, I about started crying because I realized 
that there have been things that God has started on my life, and I am to treat the fire of God. I'm to treat the grace of God. I'm to treat the spirit of God who dwells inside of me. I'm to treat that so preciously. And, and, and listen, he is so good. He is so amazing. I don't want to get into some sort of works thing, but here's what I thought about. I thought, how do you treat a fire? See, more normally in this time, this is the time where we talk about our offerings and we talk about stewardship with our finances. I want to talk to you just for a second about stewardship of the gifts that are given to us. Listen, it all it starts with God. God breathes the fire. It's not a thing you have to conjure up. But here's the deal. Here we are, Grace. We're one week out. We're one week out from God doing amazing things. And I want to ask you, how do you treat a fire? How do you treat a fire? And I think that God is going to reveal to you, listen, with, the, with what Pastor Mitch just talked about, about this year having a word, letting God speak to you, how do you treat a fire? Because you know, you don't just take a fire anywhere. There are things that can put fires out. There are people, places, things. And so how are you stewarding the work that God has started? How are you treating that fire? And I just want you to, as you think about it, now here's the deal, here's the, here's the good news. If you feel like, oh man, I've already blown it this week, good, turn your face to heaven and say help. And God is able to come and reignite that, okay? But I want you to know we have a responsibility to steward the thing he has started. So I just wanna pray over that and pray just into that. So Father God, thank you, number one, that you start the work that it's nothing in and of ourselves. It's solely by your grace. Holy Spirit, we honor you for igniting things in us this last week. We thank you for the gifts. And just as Paul urged Timothy to fan into flames the gift of God, those, those things that you've deposited, and God, every single one of us here, Lord, we believe in the priesthood of the believer. We believe that we are all called to be priests, that this is not, this is not a job for somebody else. No, this is a job for us to do. Lord, I pray in this season that this year, would you show us what it's like to walk faithfully? Would you show us what it's like to steward the things well that you have placed in our heart? Lord, may we treat that fire as the holy thing that it is. And may we honor you with our lives. Lord, that we know that stewardship is about so much more than money. It's about our lives. It's about our worship. So Father God, we give you in this moment our worship. And we thank you for this. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. All right. Hey, uh, grounded kids, sixth, seventh, eighth graders. Uh, Ty's back there, making his way back there. So you are officially dismissed. And we are doing step four of the growth track today. So that means if you've done one, two, and three, hey, today's your day to complete the growth track journey. I'll be back in the coffee corner. I'll, be, I'll meet you. Otherwise, check out these announcements. Good morning, Grace family. Ty here. I'm gonna let you know about what is happening here at Grace. Big Igloo Adventures is going axe throwing today. There are two times you can sign up for, the two o'clock slot or the 3.30 slot. The event is absolutely free, but we ask you to bring a dessert or a dish to share with the group. Then mark your calendars on February the 11th because Big Igloo Adventures is posting a fundraiser to raise money for these free events that they put on. The fundraiser will include dinner and a speaker, with plate costing $25 for the evening. Gathering! Ladies and gentlemen, 55 plus, come for a time of fellowship and a meal on Tuesdays at 11. Another round of the Emotionally Healthy Speech Audit Course is launching Sunday night starting February 19th. Join Pastor Chris as he takes another group through a journey of spiritual formation. The course will last eight weeks. Space is limited and spots filled up fast last time, so act quickly. The cost is $30 per person and includes a devotional, a workbook, and a book. Registration at kindygrace.com is now open. Adults will be starting Wednesday service on the 25th. Come watch an episode of The Chosen, Spirit at Grace, and discover the realities of walking with Jesus, seeing both the humanity and divinity of God on earth. See you there. For these events and more, go to kindergrace.com. That's all I have for you. Enjoy the rest of the service.
Good morning. God is good all the time. Amen. Amen. Hey, as uh, Pastor Chris shared, we probably could all go home after that encouragement. It was a good word and uh, appreciated that. Hey, starting this Wednesday night, uh, as you just saw, we are, uh, we're going we're gonna to work through uh, the first couple seasons of The Chosen on Wednesday nights. We're going to watch uh, the episodes and then have uh, some really good discussion about them. And really the intent is to dive into the life of Jesus and, uh, and help us dive into the Gospels in understanding the foundation of our faith and helping us uh, work through a few things. There's some things that um, have been in The Chosen. If you've watched this, some of you might have some questions about like, hey, is that really true? Or why did they put that in there? And there's, there's uh, some assumptions that are made in it for sure, um, but there's also some very, um, very revealing um, aspects that grab a hold of our heart because that's what Jesus does. And uh, so if you have not watched The Chosen, at all, come and join us on Wednesday nights, and it'll just be a good um, group together uh, that, that I'm going to be leading, and so I uh, would love for you to be part of that. And if you've already watched The Chosen, um, come back and watch them again. Um, you'll be amazed at how much you've missed, uh, how much that, that you have forgotten, or how much you're like, wow, I didn't, didn't see that the first time. And uh, so if you want to come participate, I'd love for you to do that on Wednesday nights and uh, right here at 7. Hey, I, I want to uh, make room for a couple testimonies from uh, the conference before I jump into the messages. Chris talked about not letting go of a fire, but tending to the thing that God has spoken to you about and what he started in your life. And uh, really believe that God is launching us into something that maybe we don't quite know or understand yet. Uh, but I want you to just have an opportunity to share, uh, just as Pastor Chris shared his testimony of the way the Lord spoke to him. If there's something the Lord spoke to you, I want you to share that. Um, before we do that, I'm going to ask Brian Bonds to come and share about Men's Encounter, and, uh, because that was taking place the same time as the conference, and I want him to share uh, just a little bit of uh, his experience. Good morning, Grace. Um, yeah, during the same time as the conference, we, over in Lexington, we had Men's Encounter, and this men's encounter was awesome. We had 50 more men there than we've ever had before. We had seven guys baptized. And it, during the Holy Spirit ses session, after the session, and the guy who taught the session, get this, was mentored by Brian Dimmel. And he went to church in uh, Omaha for a while, and that's where he was mentored by Brian Dem. But he brought it. And at the end of that session, the leadership team, we're down there praying for people. I prayed for eight to ten guys, and about four of them just started speaking in tongues. And nobody mentioned that, that about that. And uh, I've never seen that at Men's Encounter. And then at the end of Men's Encounter, when there's opportunity for the guys to just give testimony, so many of the guys mentioned the Holy Spirit in their testimony. And that's not happened that much in Men's Encounter. But Men's Encounter is intense, and it is wonderful to see guys nail their junk on the cross and get right with God. I saw more tears from guys this, that weekend than I've seen in a long time. I mean, they, I've, I've been to other men's encounters, but this one, it just went to another level. And guys got right with God. And uh, that's what we need. And then I came back to the, to the conference, got prayed for the Saturday night, Men's Encounter got over in the afternoon, got prayed for Saturday night, and uh, my blood sugar dropped 137 points by the next morning. Wow. Come on. Praise God. That's awesome. I didn't even know that. 
So anybody else, anybody else have a testimony from the conference, just something God's been speaking to you about or in the way that he might have ministered to you or spoke something to you? I just want to make room for that um, if there's a couple testimonies. So don't all jump at once and, you know, just crowd the stage or anything. But if there's somebody that has one, come on and share. I'll make room. If not, we'll move on. Anybody? Oh, Gary, here he comes. And Jesse. Yeah, come on. You, you jumped up first, Gary. I know, you're like, let the woman go first. I get it, but. Um, had a couple of tough years in our home, and I kept thinking, why am I feeling so distant from the Lord? Just felt like, you know, more of a disconnect, more of a disconnect, more of a disconnect. And I was sitting back there when... I don't remember who was preaching, but about ministering to the Lord. And the Holy Spirit took me back to when Juan Carlos was here. And I was sitting right there. And the Holy Spirit just totally opened up my, my heart and blew a bunch of junk out that the enemy had thrown in for years. And, um, but here's the, here's the thing that dawned on me. When, when the Holy Spirit did that that night, my prayer life completely changed. The majority of my prayer was praise. Hmm. I praised, I worshiped, I acknowledged who God was, I honored Him, I adored Him. At the very end, it'd be like, oh, and, oh and by the way, uh, we've got some things here that we're, you know, we'd like you to do, help us with. I noticed over the years what had really happened is that had shifted. And it was, God, I, I honor you. We got a whole list of things here we got to deal with. And I would go down the list and down the list and down the list and down the list. And you know exactly what was happening. What was I agreeing with? All the things on the list. Right. It wasn't the holiness, the awesomeness, the majesty of God. And when, we, when I dwelled on the list, I just began drifting further away in my spirit. So anyway, I, I'm grateful to be back on the realm of worshiping and honoring and praising God. Amen. Praise God. Listen, how many would say that, yeah, the last, you know, you could say like Gary, man, for two or three years, I've been, I've been struggling to really find that place of connection. Two or three years. There's probably many in the room. You're going to start getting a series of emails from me tonight over the next several days with some messages from another conference that took place uh, a week ago at Gateway Church. Um, they just connected so much with where we're at and what we're doing. I wanted to share these messages with you. And um, I believe the one on Tuesday night that's going to come to you. Uh, there's a prophetic word that's released, a prophetic ministry from Jensen Franklin um, that's going to line up with what Gary just said. And, uh, and so I'd, see, I'd encourage you to check those out. Um, so mine is actually, not, I mean, not necessarily in regards to me, but I was just blessed by my kids just surrendering to the Holy Spirit. And I think it was the first night, is that right? And they both came up. Lizzie, our not so vocal one is she just kept all of what God did to herself, which is fine. But um, Mick shared what was going on in his heart, and it was just cool because he was like, well, I was sitting there, and I felt like I was having this battle in my mind, and I was being told, don't go up there. There's nothing for you. And um, he said he felt like the Holy Spirit just told him, no, go. I, I want to meet with you. And he, God did. God met with him. So that was just really cool. And I'm just thankful for the Holy Spirit being active in our children. And so for all of you parents, I don't care how young your kids are, pray for them to encounter the Holy Spirit in your homes, when they come to church, wherever they're at, just that they would encounter God. And don't look at them and think, oh, maybe they can't learn or maybe they can't. Because it's like my children challenge me all the time in their spiritual walk. And there's things that God will deposit in them that are meant for you and to challenge you and to sharpen you. 
just as much as you are there for them. And then the other thing I just want to encourage, just as a body of Christ, please pray for all of our children's ministries and our pastors that are pastoring our youth, just that God would just, I don't know, there's just this burning desire that they would just be more hungry for the word of God and that they would have just an increased knowledge of what God wants to deposit in our children in this season, in this next season. And so just just be praying for them because they need it. And um, I know Chris and I coveted those prayers when we were in youth ministry. So, Amen. Amen. Thanks, Jesse. I want to, uh, as I'm, as, before we get to the word here, um, I just want to acknowledge one more uh, thing, and that is Grayson and Sawyer who are moving. And um, so, hey, why don't you guys stand up where you're at? And um, Grayson and Sawyer Fiala, who have been with us for a couple years, and, and um, I, got, I just want to share a word with you. And uh, is Alabama, is that where you're going? Yeah, moving to Alabama in a week, next Monday, tomorrow? Tomorrow, moving to Alabama tomorrow. And... Um, it says in Matthew 7, 24, therefore everyone who hears these words of mine acts like them and acts on them, on them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And, um, you know, I was just thinking about moving and moving houses and into a new place and where you want to establish your home. And, and um, for this season, it's not about a home you're moving into, but it's about a continual establishing of who you're establishing your home on and establishing your home on the rock. And it says in Proverbs 24, verse three, through wisdom a house is built. And wisdom is not something we can just gain on our own, but we can find wisdom from God. And by understanding it is established. And as God brings understanding to his wisdom, it establishes you. And by knowledge the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Wisdom, understanding, and knowledge from the Lord. I just want to pray for you guys. Ryan Hannah, why don't you guys lay hands on him? Lord, I thank you for, um, for this couple and this family, this growing family. I thank you for the Fialas, God. And Lord, I thank you for their season that they've had here at Grace, Lord. A season of awakening and a, a season of reestablishing their lives upon their faith in the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I thank you that your word says when we build our house upon you, Jesus, the rock, we would be firmly established. And I thank you, Lord, for the firm foundation that's being placed under their feet. And Lord, I pray that as they go to Alabama, Lord, and they go to begin to not just work, Lord, but there is a structure that's going to be reestablished in their family and their relationship with one another as they continue to build their lives upon you. And God, I thank you for this next season of building and shaping a stronger foundation under them, Lord, but a home that is established, Lord, a home in which you dwell. Lord, I thank you that wisdom, understanding, and knowledge come to the Fiala household and to their home. And God, I pray that you would establish them and that they would be known as a couple who knows you. And God, I pray that your grace and your wisdom and your understanding would be poured out upon them and that you would strengthen them, God. And Lord, I pray that you would surround them with people that will continue to encourage them in their faith. But I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are going to establish a home in which your peace triumphs and reigns. Lord, there are some ways in this home they've lived in here where peace did not triumph or reign. And I pray, God, that there would be such a unity under your presence and under your umbrella that peace would reign in their home. And I'm just reminded of the snake incident, which nobody knows about here, but I'm reminded of it. And so I'm just, Satan, we bind you. You have no authority to come against this family. And I pray in Jesus' name, the, the, the wall of fire, there would be a hedge of protection around them. We protect them as they travel and go, but as they are established in this new city, a new home, a new place of work, God, would you bless them and would you let your presence remain upon them? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Turn your Bibles to Psalm 24. And grab your Bible from under your chair if you don't have one. would love for you to make some marks in there and highlight a couple things in there. Psalm 24 is on page 308 of that Bible under your chair. 
and I'm going to get there in just a minute. Uh, at the Focus First Conference, um, Jessica Tate, as she came and shared and, uh, and, and introduced a concept to us that's not a new concept, it's, it's one that's um, uh, gone through and been proclaimed throughout the church for generations, but for many of us it might have been new, and it was this Latin phrase, Coram Deo. Coram Deo, and she began to share and explain some things from that, and it, it simply means to live before the face of God, that we as believers would live our lives before him, to live in his presence, under his authority, and for his glory. In his presence, where are we called to live in his presence? How are we called to live under his authority? And what is our life supposed to look like? Our life is supposed to reflect him and for his glory. And I'm not going to repeat the conference here, but I am gonna, I'm gonna expand on this phrase, Coram Deo, for the next few weeks because it lines so much up with uh, some things that God's been speaking to us about. But uh, I do wanna make mention of this um, from the conference. I, I, I was so impressed with uh, two young people who uh, really had such a foundation of the word and the spirit in their life that they really were able to flow in that. And um, really for a couple people that when they got here, and I know what this is like, you're, you're asked to go speak somewhere and a lot of times you're praying about it and God gives you a word and you're confident you're gonna deliver that word. And a lot of times that's what he'll do. But as they got here, God began to shift their messages throughout the entire weekend. The things that they had prepared to share, they did not share. They began to share this theme that God had for this body, which is Coram Deo, to live before the face of God. And from my conversations with them, I know what they were going to preach, and I know what they did preach. And it was not their own agenda, but it was the Holy Spirit's agenda. And that speaks volumes to a couple things. It speaks volumes to who we are as a body and, and, where, and what God had for us. And it also spoke to their ability to lay down their pride and say, God, what do you really want to say to these people? And so there were some powerful things shared with us. And if you missed those, I'd encourage you to go back and watch them and to, to soak in what those words were in those messages. In the first message, there's some audio missing, and I'm not going to go into why, but, but jump through some of that. The rest of them, it's, they're all good. But there's a constant theme that's woven about living in the presence of God under his authority and for his glory that is, that is really foundational for where we're gonna go the rest of this year. And it's because it ties into this word for the year that God gave me, that I shared a couple weeks ago. Well, you may know what that word is. Dominion. Dominion. Say it again, Dominion. Dominion is the word we shared, and I, I had somebody from our church who came up and shared this with me. They said, hey, do you realize everything they've been sharing is about Dominion? And I said, yes, I do. God, it brought a lot of confirmation to me of what God is speaking to me about. And so to under, truly understand dominion and to walk in dominion is really to live before the face of God. To be in his presence under his authority and living for his glory, that really is what dominion and the establishment of dominion and what God has put on my heart about dominion and subduing the earth. And so we're gonna dig into those things in the next few weeks. But I wanna talk a little bit more about dominion, which comes from this word rule, which means to have dominion over something. It literally means to rule by going down and walking among your subjects. To have dominion, to go walk among your subjects and to rule over them is, is to have dominion. And that's what God did when he sent Jesus to earth and now has left the Holy Spirit for us. That God is literally walking among us, establishing his Dominion, Jesus fully God, fully man. God has dominion over the earth. It is all his. The earth is his. Psalm 24, I wanna read these first six verses. Psalm 24 says this. The earth and everything in it. Does that mean you? Yeah. Yes, because you're on the earth. The earth and everything in it, the world and its inhabitants, belong to the Lord. Understanding that dominion is the Lord's. The earth and everything in it belongs to the Lord. It belongs to him. It is the Lord's. The Lord has dominion over the earth. And we'll get into a couple things in just a minute. But just to realize and understanding everything in the earth and in the world is his. It belongs to the earth. Verse 2, for he laid its foundation on the seas and established it on the rivers. 
Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy presence? Who may stand in his presence? Who can, if, if, if the Lord is ruler over all of the earth, who could even stand in his presence? And it says, the one who has clean hands and a pure heart. Who can tell me what we have been talking about the last five months here at Grace in one word? Holiness. Holiness. Holiness comes, we talked about, from being in the presence of God and what God works in and through us, not what we manifest out of our own lives. Holiness. How do you have clean hands and a pure heart when you've received the holiness of the Lord? Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy presence? Verse 4, the one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not appealed to what is false. In other words, who has appealed to what is true. There is one truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is truth. Say that with me. Jesus is truth. And who has not sworn deceitfully. That man, that woman, will receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Such is the generation of those who inquire of him and who seek the face of God, of the God of Jacob. The one who inquires of him and the one who seeks him. Dominion, the power or right of governing and controlling. Sovereign authority. Sovereign authority means it is authority somebody walks in, not because it was given to them, but because they have it. God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, has sovereign authority. The authority over the earth rests upon him. Whether we want to come into alignment under that authority is up to us. But regardless, he has the authority. God has the authority. Now when sin came, that ugly sin, when men and women... Adam and Eve chose to disregard the authority that God had given them and invited sin into this world. Another authority came to rule over mankind. Another authority came in. The authority of sin and destruction led by the prince of darkness, keeping men and women in captivity without hope, without help, making life hard, causing harm to individuals, nations, and people. But God, but God, he saw the destruction. And in his sovereign authority, he sent someone to atone for the sin of mankind so that we could be reconciled unto him. Not by what we could do, but by choosing him. Because we chose him. And choosing to allow his authority to rule and reign over our lives again, in that place we find reconciliation. So why do we seek the face of God? Why do we seek him? Why do we seek the face of God? Because he has dominion. He has a supreme authority over us. That's why we seek the face of God. And his authority is not heavy-handed, but rather with a loving hand. He came to love, displacing the fear of the world. To do what? To simply love. To simply love. That's why God came. Why should we live before the face of God? Because of God's dominion. Isaiah chapter 6, or chapter 9, it's on page 387. I want to read just a couple more verses here together. And if you see something that sticks out here, highlight this. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. And this goes back to the Christmas story that we just finished. The prophetic words that were given about Jesus who would come. It says, for a child will be born for us, a son will be given to us, and the government will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. And then it goes on to say this, the dominion will be vast, and its prosperity will, what's it say? Never, Never end. The dominion of what? Of the wonderful counselor, mighty God, eternal father, prince of peace, the son, Jesus, who is coming into the earth. His dominion will be vast and its prosperity will never end. He will reign on the throne of David over his kingdom to establish and sustain it with justice and righteousness from now and forevermore. His dominion. Jesus came to establish the dominion of God in the lives of his people once again. 
in Daniel, it's prophesied about, and it says in verse, chapter 4, verse 34, for his dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. In Daniel 7, it says, and suddenly one like a son of man was coming with the clouds of heaven, and he approached the Ancient of Days and was escorted before him. He was given dominion and glory and a kingdom so that those of every people, nation, and language should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will not be destroyed. No matter what the world tries to do, no matter what mankind tries to do, no matter how many times they want to tell you that God is dead, no matter how many times they want to remove God from our lives, his dominion will reign forever. His kingdom will reign. We have a choice of whether we want to be under his dominion, to live in his presence, under his authority, for his glory, or if we want to be under the dominion or the rule of the enemy. That's the choice we have. When we seek the face of God, when we seek him, remember it said in Matthew chapter six, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added unto you. When we seek first, when we seek the face of God, something powerfully ha powerful happens. Here's what happens. We stop living for God and we start living with God. See, this is what God's dominion and what his desire is for us. That we wouldn't live for him, but we would live with him. When we live for God, it keeps us in a works mentality where we are trying to earn favor from God. And we will wear ourselves out trying to live for God. There's a lot of good-hearted believers who serve for God thinking it's going to earn them some sort of favor. And they wear themselves out. They have no energy. It does not fill their tank to go and serve. They're just doing it because they think it will earn favor and so they worship and pray and read the word and serve God, all trying to do it for him, trying to gain something that's never gained. But living with God, we are living under grace. And our worship, our prayer, and our study, and our service, all are life-producing I see it all the time. I see those who come to serve to earn the favor of God and they wear themselves out. There's no joy in them, but they're doing it because they have to. I heard a pastor friend tell me a story of somebody who was, who was an usher at one point in time at the church. And he stood at the, out of the door and he handed out bulletins and he had the biggest frown on his life and was the most unwelcoming man ever. <laughs> Nobody wanted to get a bulletin from him. And the pastor said, well, why, why do you, you're not very happy. Why do you serve as an usher? Because I have to. I have to do this for God. I have to hand out bulletins. Because <laughs> he was trying to earn favor. He was trying to do it for God. Then you have the other person who comes and serves and, and, and they just... They have life on them and they're giving hugs and smiling and handing out and they're like, I don't care if I have to do a few extra minutes or I have to come a few minutes earlier. And they just show up because they just want to serve the one that they're under dominion in. We've all been in the place where we've served for God. We all get in that place in our flesh where we go and serve for God trying to earn something from us and we just wear ourselves out. And we've probably all experienced those times where we've went and served with God. And what happened? Great joy, great peace. Life was flowing out of us. Living for God is not living under his dominion. Living with God is living under his dominion, partnering with him. Our position in Christ is one in which we partner with him. Why? Because the word says we are seated in heavenly places. Colossians chapter three says this, so if you have been raised with Christ, in other words, if you have been born again, you were dead, now you've come to life, you've been raised to life, you've experienced his resurrection power, seek the things above, where Christ is. 
That's living before the face of God, seeking the things above. Above what? This broken world. All the mess around you, the people that mistreated you, the people that are trying to offend you, the things that aren't going right. Seek the things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life now is hidden with Christ in God. That's good news. With Christ, when Christ, who is your life? <laughs> Who is your life? What is your, when somebody asks you, who is your life? Christ is my life. When Christ, who is your life, appears, oh yeah, then you'll also appear with him in glory. Come on, that's good news right there. That's, that's the joy of our salvation right there. Dominion, God's sovereign authority. You can either get under it and experience grace, mercy, favor, hope, love, and kindness, or you can try to earn it and wear out in your striving, never actually walking in what God has provided for you. Or you can resist it and stand under the authority of this world, the prince and the power of the air, and live in defeat and destruction, depression, oppression, strife, and disaster. As believers, we can still get under the wrong authority. We can get under the wrong one. Coram Deo, to live in the face of God. The prophetic word that was declared to Amos says this in verse, chapter 5, verse 4. It says, seek me and live. Seek me and live. How do you stay in the, under the dominion of the Lord? You seek him. It's the beginning and the end of a fruitful life of the believer to seek the Lord and live. To live, to truly live comes from seeking the Lord. What's that? It just means turning your face to him, turning to him. Seeking him for his answers. It's where we start. It's where we end. It's in the middle. It's in the good times, the difficult times. It's in the life of the believer to seek the Lord. The one who has established dominion. The one who has supreme, sovereign authority over my life. It's really the authority issue in our lives. Many of us have allowed Jesus to be Savior, but few of us have allowed him to be Lord. Because that is where the issue is settled. That is where true joy comes in the life of the believer, when the lordship of Jesus is established. John, the apostle John, wrote the book of Revelation, and he wrote this, and, and it was a word was spoken to him. It said, it, John said, to, it was speaking to John, to the seven churches in Asia, grace and peace to you from the one who is, who was, and who is to come. That's Jesus. And from the seven spirits before his throne, and from Christ, Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and has set us free from our sins by his blood. To the one who loves us and has set us free and made us a kingdom, priest to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Be dominion, be given authority to the one who's made us a kingdom and priests. You've been made a priest before the Lord. Both men and women, you've been made a priest. Priests, as we read a few weeks ago in Hebrews, under a new priesthood with a new law, priests minister to God. Priests stand before God and minister to him. It's what Gary was sharing earlier. When his prayers were all ministering to the Lord. They weren't about the stuff here. It's not that he didn't have to need to talk about these things here, but they weren't what was dictating his life. What was dictating him was this ability to minister unto the Lord. And in that, what he said was he walked in greater joy. When he was ministering unto the Lord. It's not just a pastor who's a priest unto the Lord. But every man and woman who have come into salvation, you have been made a priest. And the function of the priest, the function of the priest is to seek the face of God. Coram Deo. To seek the face of God. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Not only does God have dominion over the earth, but it becomes functional in our lives when we give it to him. When we give him dominion over our life. So how do you give God dominion? I'm going to close with these five things. How do you give God dominion in your life? How do you give it to him? 
Because he's not one that will force it on you. He could, but he won't. Here's the first one. You give him dominion by praising him. By praising him. Psalm 140, verse 13. Surely the righteous will praise your name and the upright will live in your presence. When you praise him, you are acknowledging his presence that is here with us now. You're honoring him for who he is, for what he's done. You're exalting him. And when you do that, you are giving him dominion in your life. When you praise him. The second thing is to acknowledge his goodness and mercy. When you don't just praise him, but then you acknowledge the goodness of God and the mercy of God, his dominion is established in your life. Only goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord as long as I live. King David had a few things figured out. Acknowledge the goodness and mercy of the Lord. You establish dominion. You give God dominion in your life when you behold his beauty. The third thing, beholding his beauty. Psalm 27 verse 4 says, I have asked one thing from the Lord. It is what I desire, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, gazing on the beauty of the Lord and seeking him in his temple. The beauty, the dominion of the Lord. You give God dominion when you rest in him. When you rest in him. Psalm 61 says, I will dwell in your tent forever and take refuge under the shelter of your wings. Selah, which means stop and think about that. Rest in that. To rest in him, I will dwell in your tent forever and take refuge under the shelter of, shelter of your wings. What's that do? It brings peace when you come under his dominion. To praise him, to acknowledge goodness and mercy, to behold his beauty, to rest in him, and lastly, to simply live under him. Psalm 91, the one who lives under the protection of the Most High dwells in the shadow of the Almighty. To live under him means you are submitted to his lordship. You are submitted to him. And God does not, he does not come at us and rule over us with this heavy hand, but rather he comes along us with a loving hand to live under him. When we settle the dominion issue, the authority issue in our lives, we allow the supernatural power of heaven to operate in our lives. Here's what his authority means. His authority means his truth. Who's the truth? Jesus. That means you have to let go of this cultural phrase that people want to live with, my truth. My truth. It's just my truth. That's not truth. There's only one truth. Jesus is the truth. When you submit to his truth, you have to let go of my truth. And listen, we all have some of my truth in us. We all wrestle with my truth. It's when we when we read this word and it begins to read us and we're like, yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> That's when I've decided it's my truth. It's his truth when I read his word and I don't understand it, but yet I receive it. And I say, I want to receive. Holy Spirit, will you show me what this means for me? That's me sitting under his truth. Jesus is the word. He is the truth. When you get under his authority, his truth matters. It settles some of the struggle we have with saying, well, I just, God forgives me, I'm going to have a little bit of this sin over here. I'm going to invite some of this stuff into my life that I probably shouldn't have because eh, it's okay for me. It's probably not okay for you, but it's okay for me. That's my truth. The Holy Spirit will affirm his truth. That's being under his dominion, his authority. Who has the ability to tell you no? Do you know Holy Spirit well enough that when he says no, you can listen? I know, I'm meddling now. His authority means his voice matters, and it trumps the voice of the age. 
His voice matters over the politics. His voice matters over the cultural norms. His voice matters over whatever is being accepted in today's culture. His truth. His voice. His voice is what I'm obedient to. His authority means that his hand overrules the battles of my life. I'm in a battle, but you know what? His hand overrules my battle. I'm submitted to his sovereign authority over my life. I'm going to share one more verse with you, and then I'm going to play a song. And I want you to ask the Lord a couple questions. Here's the verse, Isaiah chapter 26. You will keep the mind that is dependent on you. That means the one who has been seeking him, the one who has submitted to him, the one who has allowed his authority to be ruler, the one who says, I'm going to make you Lord. You will keep the mind that is dependent on you in perfect peace. For it is trusting in you. Trust in the Lord forever. Because in the Lord, the Lord himself is an everlasting rock. Just close your eyes for a minute. I want you to ask the Lord. Is it, this song's going to play. I want you to ask the Lord, where do I need to give you dominion? Where in my life have I not submitted authority to you? Where do I need to declare that your dominion, your wisdom, your power, your honor, your glory rules over my life? Just take five minutes. If he begins to reveal some things, write it down.
Father God, we just acknowledge before you, God, all glory, all honor, all power, all dominion, all wisdom is yours. God, we, we just humbly come under your authority today. We submit our lives unto you. Father, I, I, I'm so thankful as testimonies are shared that you have encountered men and women. And there's been a fire that's been stirred up within many. And Lord, today, as, as we just submit and surrender ourselves under your authority, Father, we ask you that your dominion would be established over us. That your dominion, that your glory, your honor, your power, your wisdom would be established over our lives. Father, I lay down all of the ways that I've been living for you in a desire to live with you. God, I lay down those places in my life where I've formed my truth, and I want to be under your truth. God, I let go of the stronghold that the voices of the world have had over your voice today. That your voice, your voice would have authority over my life. And in every battle that I have, God, I submit to your hand. I submit to your hand and to your grace. We're still in the beginning of this year, God. And we're in this place where we are rending our hearts before you. We are letting go of things, things that have held on for too long, things that have dictated our lives, things that have, that have ordered our steps that are not of you, we say yes to you, God. We say yes to your authority and yes to your dominion. Father, rule and reign over my life. Rule and reign over my life, God. Rule and reign over my life, God. Rule and reign over my life. So many times we want God to fix all these other relationships and issues, and it starts with me. Allowing God to rule and reign over me and all that I have so that His authority would be established in and through my life. Father, I pray this week, and I ask you, Holy Spirit, will you remind us, would this word, dominion, just come up? Would it just pop into our minds? Would you remind us, Holy Spirit, when we're we're just yielding to our flesh and we're not submitting to your authority. Will you remind us, Holy Spirit, when we're missing the voice and we're missing the mark and we're being led astray by other voices, will you remind us when we're not allowing Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life, to lead us? Will you remind us, Holy Spirit, that heavenly dominion is where we will all end one day. The day we get to go to eternity, we will all enter into heavenly dominion. And we ask you, God, that it would rule over our lives today. 2023, it's no longer 2020, it's no longer 2021, it's no longer 2022. It's a new hour and a new season. It's a new day. And we establish ourselves before you again. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Come on, thank God for his word today. His word. As you leave today, here's what I want you to do. If you got a word from the Lord, I want you to make sure you write that down. But I want you to share that with somebody. Something powerful happens when you share what God has spoken to you. I had two people come and share their word with me after, during the meet and greet time. 
And, and I appreciated that. And somebody else is going to appreciate the word that God has spoken to you about if he's spoken one to you. And so share that. If you don't have one, seek him for it. You can drop your connection cards, your offerings on the way out today. Encourage somebody and love them on the way. If you need prayer this morning, there'll be people down here to pray with you and uh, to pray for whatever you need in your life. Be blessed. Have a great week.